the, the last keynote we, we have today will be from Mane Gordon from IBM um, about market perspectives on governance, compliance, and identity management. Please welcome Marne Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marne Gordon. I am the GRC market manager for IBM's Tivoli Software Group. Um, and I think I am having technical difficulties already. No, here we go. All right. OK. I know we only have half an hour. And it looks like I have a huge agenda, but I guarantee I will get through this in time for dinner. I want to talk about the state of the, the GRC market. I do want to talk about why compliance and governance are important, but more importantly, and the thing I want you to take away from today is I want to talk about performance against spending, because we are spending an awful lot of money in this space, and sometimes I don't think all of us are getting everything that we invested out of it. So let's talk about this. There has been a sudden interest in governance in the last few years. As a matter of fact, my position and uh, mo much of the GRC group at IBM did not exist three or four years ago. We were talking about compliance and talking about compliance for years, but really what's driving the big interest in governance in the last few years has been Sarbanes-Oxley and to a slightly lesser extent, Basel II. These have really brought governance into the mainstream where before they were the purview of only, only the largest companies with the most complex and extended enterprises, those companies that routinely use things like uh, balanced scorecard, like Six Sigma. Those were the companies that dealt with governance. Now governance has been, is now in the vernacular of companies large and small because of these two particular requirements, Basel II and Sarbanes-Oxley. But really, the concept of governance has been around, according to the UN at least, since, uh, since the dawn of time, since the beginning of civilization. It really is about the decision-making process and how those decisions, once we arrive at them, are successfully or not successfully implemented. And when we talk about compliance and governance, I know I, sometimes I am very guilty of this, but we tend to use them both as terms of art and throw them around as if they're interchangeable, and really they're not. When we th for, the, for the rest of the day, for the, the purposes of this discussion, I would like us to think about compliance as the more practical and tactical. What we do, the, the checklist, the things we have to do, our tasks, and governance as more strategic and more behavioral, indicative of the behavior of the entire organization. Compliance is one component, a key component, obviously, but just one component of overall corporate governance. Um, Wikipedia, how is that for a source? If you can't trust Wikipedia, who can you trust? But actually, in this, in this one rare case, I actually agree very much with their, their definition of governance uh, in terms of of IT and the use of data and data privacy. So this, this was the one useful piece of information I've ever found on Wikipedia. But um, defining governance in terms of IT, shall I stand here while you squint and try to read this? No. Um, really, it, this was from a, a Harvard Business Review article uh, just a few years ago. And really what it talks about is that now the role of governance and the, the emphasis of things like Sarbanes-Oxley and Basel II have really allowed IT to take its rightful place within the organization. Remember the good old days when we were all the geeks that lived in the basement and we just came up to change your password or you know, fix your keyboard or things like that? Well, that's not the role of IT any longer. IT is now very much an integral part of the business and very much core to how the business behaves and how well the business is managed and how well the business is run. So that's actually a good byproduct from both Basel II and from Sarbanes-Oxley. It has clear relationships. IT governance has clear relationships to other IT disciplines. Asset management, portfolio management, project management. I could go on and on. But really, governance is now allowing IT to take its rightful place in the overall business structure. And it gives us a seat at the table and some recognition by the boards of directors and by senior management. Let's talk for just one minute about the actual state of the GRC market. This is the most recent uh, GRC spending survey that I have seen. This is AMR, and this is from, uh, from last month, I believe. But it's a $32 billion market now. And the spending over the next year to 18 months is only set to increase. Um, 
The bottom line is that governance, risk management, and compliance spending will exceed $32 billion for this year, and that's up almost 7.5% from last year. Companies shift towards identifying, assessing, and managing risk across numerous business and IT areas. This was a very detailed survey. It was 420 IT and line of business managers. It covered the United States, Germany, and Japan. It also covered spending plans, adoption, growth, and business drivers. And the key findings were that in 2008, again, the spending is up. The average GRC spending per company is a little over $2 million. And risk management is now the new compliance. We're moving away from the compliance checklist, from just getting this checklist done so that I can pass the audit. We're moving away from that towards looking at risk and how to best spend my dollars against risk to achieve effective information security. This actually puts compliance in its rightful place because that makes compliance a byproduct of an effective information security strategy rather than compliance as just its own object to be achieved. IT risk is clearly now a separate buying center according to this survey and environmental concerns are also on the rise. Um, these are, are what were identified in the survey as the most influential driving uh, issues driving investment. And you can see here that the number one is to better manage and mitigate risk to the business. Okay, so we're not talking about just getting the latest, greatest IT control. We're talking about using that to improve business operations. This is just a breakout of how, how the three different countries are spending a little bit differently. Um, you can see what the areas of concern are in Japan as opposed to what the areas of concern are. There we go. The areas of concern in Japan are here in the dark uh, color. The, the lightest color is um, the United States and Germany is here in the middle. But you can see where we're, we're spending our money a little bit differently. Establishing legally defendable in information environment, that's big in Japan, much bigger than it is in the United States. Whereas we're both about equal in terms of better managing and mitigating risks in the business. So you can just see how the behaviors differ slightly depending on what region you're in. The largest single GRC investment for all countries and all buyers, um, number one again is the IT specific risk management. Uh, way down at the bottom there is import, export, and trading regulations. And that used to be a much bigger driver even two or three years ago. But things have really shifted and everybody is looking at an eye towards risk. That's very important as we'll see in a couple of minutes. But we're also really seriously now toying with the concept of return on investment for GRC spending. Return on investment has been a kind of a pipe dream for security spending for a long, long time. It's been elusive. You can't, you can't prove a negative, you can't really quantify the actual tangible benefits of money spent on information security as opposed to regular IT, but now we're trying to see other benefits to the business that can be derived from good compliance and good information security. A lot of organizations are looking to streamline business processes, a lot are looking for better quality, a lot are looking for a more secure environment, and they're looking for that to come from the GRC spending that they're doing. Okay, these are all interesting facts, but let's talk about why governance is really important. Can anybody tell me why is governance really, really important? Okay, is anybody awake? <laughs> this man. This man is why governance is really, really important. You know this story better than I do. You've gotten a lot more coverage over here than we have in the United States. Although if you haven't read the New York Times uh, series of articles on this, those I think are the best English language sources of information on this particular story. But seriously, this man is why good corporate governance is so important. Does anybody think that Societe Generale did not have policies in place? Does anybody think that Societe Generale didn't mention to some of their traders that they probably shouldn't be originating and approving their own transactions. That probably came during orientation. I'm sure, I'm sure as I'm standing here that they had policies and procedures on segregation of duties, that they had approval processes, that they told them at some point during the security training that you were not allowed to hijack other users' accounts in order to execute phony trades.